Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Medicafe. Uh, grab your cup of coffee or your tea and sit back and let's chat about the astrology, human design, whatever we can think of. And yoo-hoo, it's the weekend, or we're moving into the weekend. I uh, Sorry, I was just a couple of minutes behind the times here because I was having a freak out moment just after my husband left this morning to go to work, the sirens on the island started ringing. That usually tells us that there's a fire call or an accident or, you know, it's the, a call. It's a volunteer fire department. And so I immediately pick up the phone and call my husband and he's not answering. I text him and he he's not answering. And I'm like, okay, is it that he's driving and he's not picking up his phone or is it that there he is part of an accident? And then I'm like beating myself up. I didn't remind him that Mars was conjunct Neptune today to watch out in the ice, to watch out. And then finally, I couldn't stand it at 10 minutes to eight. You know, he should have already been to work. I'm calling my daughter because they work together. And I'm like, Jennifer, did your dad make it to work? And she starts talking to people and they're like, no, no, he's not here. So she takes it upon herself to go outside and sees him sitting in the car. <sighs> He wasn't able, his phone didn't ring for whatever reason. Thank you, Mercury, still in the shadow playing games. So I had to pull myself together and thank God that he was fine and that all is well. Craziness, right? Crazy way to start the day. So good morning to all of you, Rebecca, Michelle, Vanita, Debbie. It's good to see you all out there this morning. And it is a very chilly morning here. Ice is building up on things because this is like day four or five of uh, below freezing temperatures. We're not used to that. Yesterday, our uh, water overflow valves blew and, you know, sprayed the porch with a sheen of water, which of course froze. And I had a mini little ice lake on my front porch, which is kind of fun. Um, good morning, Crystal. Um Oh, gosh, she's got great information for us. She says there's a menu option to have notifications turned on in the top left of Facebook screens as you watch live. She heard us all yesterday talking about that. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. So that's in the chat. You guys can see that. Holly, good morning to you, too. So here we are. It. Good morning, Michelle Gay. I'm sorry I missed you out there. Um, it is a new moon. Yay! We, um, while we were sleeping, a new moon occurred 11 something, 11 20 p.m. last night for us on the West Coast and for you all on the East Coast, 11 that would have been 2 20 in the morning. In fact, I thought I read somewhere it was 2 2 2 for you guys on the East Coast, which I think is kind of fun when the triple digits play out in a an astrological transit of note. And certainly the new moon is of note. So there we have it. Uh, Vanita says, yes, burr. Good morning, Natasha. Um, so I had some interesting things happen yesterday. I don't know what, it, maybe because Mercury was, yeah, was 123 in the afternoon yesterday when Mercury changed directions. And uh, I was sitting here and I saw a text, not a text, a messenger message come in. And it went into my living astrology box. So usually I have to jump on those right away because you get brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> the faster you answer, the better Facebook thinks that you're being out there in your world. Um, and besides that, it was a, an intriguing message from this lady that uh, I, I didn't know. And uh, she asked, she was asking questions about doing readings and things like that. Well, it turns out she was also born in the same year I was born in. She was born later in uh, August and I was born in June. So she's a little bit younger than me. And we had such an intriguing conversation that I end up pulling a chart. And when I pull her chart, I'm looking at it going, that looks so freaking familiar. Now, two months is a big time difference between births if you're looking at charts, right? I mean, the sun would have moved from Gemini into Leo. And, you know, some of the outer planets might be sort of similar, but certainly not in the same places. And so then I went, I know what that looks like. It looks like my progressed astrology chart. So I get into my program and I pull up my progress chart, put hers and mine next to each other. They are exact copies. Like I could put mine over hers and her birth chart would align with my progressed chart. And I'll tell you why that's fantastic. Because 
there was some things that she was saying to me in uh, the conversation that were sending like little shivers down through my body, which are usually, you know, like truth bumps. And one of the things that she was saying is that she had suffered in her life from cerebral palsy. I think it was something, I think that's a, a genetic disorder that you're born with. And she said, but you know what? I did not let the, what the doctors told me, keep me down. She said, I defied all the odds. She said, I think that's my path in life to defy all the odds and break free. And what I was looking at in her astrology chart was a preponderance of planets in the 12th house, like maybe eight of them. And the 12th house is literally the house of prisons, like being chained up. And you can imagine if you were trapped inside of a, a body that has been ravaged by cerebral palsy, what that's like, right? That being in your body and trapped and she refuses to let it trap her. And so she's pulled, she's healed herself from cerebral palsy. But the reason why it fascinated me was because all of my progressed planets are in my 12th house. And all of this year in particular, but even maybe for the last couple of years, I've felt chained up. But I haven't really called it that. To me, I felt like I had some kind of cap on that's holding me down or holding me in place where I couldn't move, you know, kind of a straight jacket feeling. And um, the reason what she said was so important to me at that moment was I realized it was a prison of my own making and that I can break free from it. So, I mean, literally those chill bumps were amazing. And yet I've never seen, never seen a chart that aligned like that. I mean, everything at the same degrees, but I can tell you why that would happen because in a progressed chart, we progress your chart ahead one day for every one degree that the sun has moved in your chart. <clears throat> I'm 57 years old, so my chart has progressed 57 degrees. Well, she was born 57 days ahead of me or behind me. So it makes perfect sense when you look at the mechanics of it, but it was striking in the visual element and in the idea that my, I mean, I just knew that this was some angel that was brought to me <laughs> to, to deliver a message out of the blue when I least expected it and for reasons I would never have expected in my in my world. So the world is magical and how interesting to be delivered to me right after Mercury turned re uh, back to direct motion from retrograde. It's amazing. So some of you, it, the reason I'm sharing this story is because some of you may have also gotten messages delivered to you yesterday, either through somebody else or through a literal email message, a phone call message, something might have been delivered to you through your dreams last night. And I had cracked out dreams, that's for sure. Um, weird dreams. I, I had dogs in my dreams. I had a little girl that was walking me through her house, uh, all kinds of, and you know, the house, a house in your dreams is almost always your unconscious mind and, or the, you know, your, your mind, what's in your mind. So interesting day yesterday, uh, interesting, just interesting times I think we live in. Um, let's take a look at what is going on today. I'd be really interested to hear if you, some of you had weird experiences yesterday in the grand scheme of things. Um, it would have been 123 in the afternoon that it went direct here in the West Coast. So that would make it 3, 423 p.m. on the East Coast. And uh, so somewhere in the afternoon yesterday is when this would have happened for you, perhaps, or even into the early evening. And it may yet happen today, depending on your personal chart. So we've also, like I started to say, we've walked into the new moon in Sagittarius. Woohoo! That means we are optimistic. We are enthusiastic. There's adventure to be had or that feeling that there's this adventurous side to us. Um, I had an early morning conversation with someone who was telling me she was off for the weekend. She was going, you know, on a on a trip, uh, an impromptu trip just to have a great time. Yes, go do it. Um, there is one drawback that's pretty big drawback, actually. A couple of drawbacks. One is that we have a tendency to overindulge when we're talking about this amount of energy happening in Sagittarius because we're now putting the sun and the moon and Jupiter there, and they're all three on top of one another. So we want to be able to be monitoring how much of something that we're doing. 
right? Like I tell people often, if you decide suddenly to get healthy and that you're going to do that by starting to run, you don't run uh, five miles today if you haven't been running five miles every day, right? If you try to do that, your muscles are going to scream at you. And uh, literally at this point in time, you know, ha have you guys ever heard of a condition called rhabdomyelosis? Rhabdo is something that happens when you overwork your muscles and your muscles release too much of an enzyme into your bloodstream and it can it can have the effect of shutting down your kidneys. My daughter did this to herself. She did an excessive workout and um, after that workout was done, someone came along and said, hey, do you want to do a, an ab workout now? And she's like, sure. So she did that and two days later, she was not feeling good. And when she went to the hospital and they did her blood work, they were like, oh, my God, you're in rhabdomyelosis or myel, whatever it is. So there are consequences for overdoing things. And that's why I say we've got to keep things in, you know, proportion and to keep things, you know, within some sort of limits. Right. Because sometimes when we have too much going on in Sagittarius, the limit lines get blurred and we can't see as clearly, right? So, you know, spending $500 on Christmas is good. Why not a thousand, you know, and then later on when the bills start rolling in, right, you're paying the price. So taking care not to overindulge and the other sort of weird side frustration, perhaps with uh, this much energy in Sagittarius is that we really want to say what's on our minds. We really want to say things in a very blunt manner and unfortunately, that can hurt people's feelings. So please try to monitor your reactions and what you say to people, right? It can be taken the wrong way. Remember that if you have an open throat in your human design, you are not designed to just blurt things out. But this is a blurt things out kind of time. So we want to monitor what we say very carefully. Um, on the high side, these planets sitting in Sagittarius at the new moon open up a huge portal for us to be inspired or in spirit to nurture that spiritual side of ourselves. So it is a great time for increased faith and trust in a benevolent universe to surrender or let go and let God in whatever way it is that you've been kicking and screaming and, you know, trying to do God's job for him or her. Um, it is also a time for us to be visionaries, to dream, to expand and look forward, right? In um, the Sagittarius uh, energies are very much able to see the big pictures, right? The big picture, not just the, the trees in the forest, but the whole entire forest or maybe the entire earth, right? And how the forests play their role in protecting the planet. The, uh, the lungs, as it were, of the planet. So finding out that you're just a small bit player in a much bigger play, in a much bigger plan, um, is very much a part of this. And the awe and the, um, the wonder that can come up when we realize how big things really are. And when we put things into perspective, right? So this is a really powerful new moon. And I think it's a good one. But the only caveat is just don't go too far too fast. Remember, today is also Mars in a conjunction to Neptune that slows things down, down, slow, right? Um, so we want to make sure that I'm going to talk more about the Mars conjunct Neptune in just a minute. I'm going to take a look at comments. People are saying, good morning, Colleen. Willa says she's struggling with blurting things out. Haven't yet, but man, I wanted to. Uh, yes, uh huh. That's what. But the control that you have, and I, that's not even the best word. The the discipline it takes to not blurt is the the thing that we all have within us, right? To we have that that ability to breathe first, then choose how to react, and not just react with the knee jerk, right? So taking action versus reaction and making sure that you don't just blurt out things that might hurt someone else's feelings. And also knowing too that other people may not know this kind of information, 
right? They're not in the know. They're not listening to this show this morning. Maybe they don't even know anything about astrology and they may be given, giving into the, the need to blurt and you can't control what they say or do, but you can control how you react to that. And you can understand maybe that there's this blur of unconsciousness that they've brought to the picture, right? So slow your roll, watch what you say, don't get called in or pulled into other people's dramas uh, or into, you know, reacting to what other people might say or do today, even through the next couple of days. I mean, this energy is pretty potent and uh, yet it feels really good. To me, this feels like a really good day. The sun is shining. I could see Mount Rainier. It's bright out there, even if cold. I mean, it just drives that feeling of optimism. So wherever you are today, if the feeling of optimism is there, the feeling of wanting to expand, generosity is another part of that, then just know that you just want to hold everything into proportion. All right. Okay. Any other questions out there? Go ahead and type them into the, the chat center. Um, Mars conjunct Neptune. We've been talking about this off and on for the last couple of days, but I wanted to re, um, retell you or re, um, my mouth is not working. My brain is off today. Apparently I have Mercury retrograde in my natal chart. So when Mercury turns back to direct motion, it is almost like I suddenly can't talk anymore. Sorry. I had my, my ringer on in case my husband was ready to call me. <sighs> so I, let me tell you some more about Mars conjunct Neptune energy, because it's kind of an irritable itchy sort of, I don't know what's wrong with me kind of energy. It, it's what I, my favorite word, scritchy energy, where you can't just pin down what it is that's bothering you. So it is, it would feed into uh, possibly our optimism and our wanting to take action. And if you take action in the wrong direction, or you take too much action, then you're going to pay for that later. So we need a release. We need a release valve, something where we can relieve the pressure that this particular transit brings up. So we can do that through a couple of ways. We can do that through physical movement, getting out and doing something. I don't even care if it's yoga at this point, right? You could do something that, in fact, yoga, dancing, um, um, you know, it, uh, any Tai Chi, some kinds of those movements help to channel energy right? So it doesn't have to be like last weekend, I was saying you need to get that physical running, walking, uh, go to the gym kind of exercise. But Mars and Neptune together are a little bit different. They're more like the, the more gentle sort of exercises that help you move pent up emotional energy or uh, stress energy and channel it in positive ways. But you could also go and walk, swim. That's another great thing, right? Pisces is where this is occurring. Pisces water. So swimming. Awesome. Um, the other way that you can release this stress today or this, this tension, and this is up through the weekend, by the way, guys. So it's not just today. Today it's exact, but you know, the waning feeling of this energy will go through, take us through the weekend. And uh, the other thing you could do is get yourself involved creatively. Do something spectacularly creative, draw, paint, dance, write, I, whatever it is, right? You know what I'm doing this weekend? Tomorrow we are doing our family get together uh, where we bake Christmas cookies, the sugar cookie type, and then we decorate them. So the whole family gathers and we decorate Christmas cookies. How artistic is that, right? How much fun creatively is that? A great way to take all that energy, that pent up energy and put it to use, bake some cookies and then decorate them, <laughs> you know, get your cookie cutters out. It's the only time of year we can really get those cookie cutters out and do fun things with them. Right. So, well, I guess we could do it other times of the year too, but it wouldn't be all of the Christmassy things that we like to do with cookies. So we buy, you know, all we buy white frosting or we make up a big batch of white frosting and food dye to different colors and we get all the little spangles and sparkles and little uh, sprinkles to put on the cookies. It's really a lot of fun, very creative. And I'm looking forward to that tomorrow, as well as looking forward to making Christmas wine, which we always do too, at the same time, Christmas wine and cookies. 
what's not to like, right? Um, Angie, good morning, sweetie. She says, dance, woot, woot. Yeah, you know, hey, some this is a great, that just occurred to me too. This is a great time to, you know, put together a little ritual, a celebration, right? Lighting candles or setting intentions by the light of a candle, doing a dance or, you know, getting your drums out. Somebody told me yesterday to get out my drum and do some shamanic drumming. And I thought, what a great idea. And then I promptly had to make dinner. And so I didn't have time to really do any drumming, but I'm going to do that today. And I'm going to grab my, my hummingbird drum and I'm going to uh, maybe drum up some joy, right? Hummingbird represents joy. So it's a great time for that. Debbie says, maybe I'll make some special cookies, wink, wink. <laughs> I know what kind you're talking about, but uh, you, we have kids involved. We won't be making those kind of special cookies. Um, but it is a great time, you know, do things to be celebratory, to um, express creativity. And maybe that is decorating your house if you haven't done it yet, decorating the Christmas tree, um, whatever that means for you. I know, Benita, I think you, you used to do this. I don't know if you still belly dance. I think that's a great way to dispel this kind of energy in belly dancing, right? Moving your body. Karate, if you're still doing that too, that's a little more um, deliberate and not, um, it's more physical, um, but belly dancing is physical, but also creative. I don't know. Use your imagination. Benita says she has a dolphin drum. I love it. Drumming is a great idea. And you know, Vanita, I think, didn't you make your drum with me when we had Mystic Moon in Cedro Woolley? Uh, we had a, a, a Native American man come in to the store that I had at the time, and he showed us how to make drums. And we made drums from deer hide, right? He brought the different hides and the, the leather um, cord, and we made our own drums. Uh, she says, yeah, okay, yeah. So I made an 18-inch round drum. And then a few years later, one of my clients from Mystic Moon had painted a cougar or a mountain lion on her drum. And I went, I, I said, wow, why did, you know, why did you choose that? And she said, well, it's my spirit animal. And I went, oh my gosh, can you paint my spirit animal on a drum for me? And she's on my drum. And she said, absolutely. What's your spirit animal? And I couldn't think of what my spirit animal was, but I knew that I loved, absolutely loved hummingbirds. So I had her draw uh, or paint a hummingbird on my drum and it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And uh, no, she missed that class. Boo. Anyway, it, it just reminded me of that. So uh, get your drums out. Joss wants me to tell you she has a climbing competition tomorrow. That's how she's expelling her energy. Awesome, Joss. Great way to do it. Um, just don't attack the wall. Just flow with the wall right? We're talking water energy. So you flow with the movement and then you are also more safe, right? You're more safe when you are flowing with the movement. Um, Debbie says she painted a hibiscus on hers, flower power. I think that's perfect for you, Debbie. And uh, so, you know, be creative. That's all I'm saying, right? This energy is, it, it can be difficult energy. It can be emotional, right? We're in Pisces energy and Pisces has that bipolar feel, right? Where one minute I'm up and the next minute I'm down and Mars isn't helping matters any because he's kind of slowing down your action. And so do something that you can do, that you can flow with, that, that feels good to you. And uh, Michelle, I'd love to see you climb the wall too. Ah, I would be so scared, but do it, right? Try it. See how it works for you. Um, all right. What else is happening this weekend? So, um, oh, backward a minute. Let me go back to Mars and Neptune before I go into the rest of the weekend. Mixed into all of this with Mars and Neptune is that energy of self-doubt that we were talking about yesterday. Remember, because these two are sitting together at gate 63. Now, throughout the whole of the year, Neptune had been sitting at this gate. And so there's this pervasive yet under the like undercurrent of self-doubt that can creep in when we least expect it. Um, I felt it when I was getting prepared for the webinar the other day. And I, I felt it when I get, I feel it before I get ready to do a reading with people. And I, I recognize it. I, I value that it's there, but I don't allow it to take hold of me because 
the the energy of doubt and suspicion where these two planets are sitting together isn't meant to be used internally or pointed at you it's meant to be you know at you know using your discernment about what is going on in the outer world around you and unfortunately though with neptune we get sort of clouded in our perceptions and we may feel this energy around doubt and suspicion and since we don't know where to tell it to, to go, like we're not sure what it is that triggered it, we turn it inward on ourselves. Don't do that. Just don't. Don't do it. Because then that triggers all kinds. Remember, doubt and suspicion gate 63 is up here in the head. It can take away your inspiration. The head center itself is all about inspiring you being inspired and helping to inspire others. So when self-doubt creeps in, then it takes away that inspiration, right? Remember, I always tell you, I keep a crayon book here, a color book, and I've got crayons. I have tarot cards to color. I have all kinds of fun things that I can do when I get to this feeling. And it is most wonderful experience to do that. Willa, awesome. Um, she is combining the generosity of spirit of the new moon with creative energy by volunteering her time to wrap gifts for the Children's Advocacy Center in for their Christmas. That's a great use of energy as well. Go do some volunteer work, volunteer to do something fun. Maybe, um, maybe volunteer to uh, join a, a, a singing group or something. Singing is also extraordinarily creative. Um, chanting, singing. Yes, we can find all kinds of things that we can do to keep ourselves out of this, uh, you know, scritchy sort of self-doubting energy. Now let's take a look at the weekend. So today the moon is in Sagittarius all day and tomorrow morning at 2.01 a.m. my time, the moon goes into void, of course, which signals, of course, she's changing signs. And by 4.02 a.m. Pacific time, 7.02 a.m. East Coast time, she has moved out of the sign of Sagittarius and into Capricorn, a much sterner, more all business sort of sign. And, I, you know, I'm, I, I'm conflicted about a weekend that has Capricorn. I mean, on the one hand, I might be able to catch up and get things done that I haven't been able to get done for whatever reason. On the other hand, it does have a dampening uh, effect on your spirit, potentially, potentially. Um, so we are walking a fine line this weekend with the moon in Capricorn. Um, it may be, uh, you know, feeling like there's something that's just not quite happy-go-lucky. But it's great energy for, uh, if I could sing, I would sing the song, Taking Care of Business. Um, maybe put that song on when you start feeling the, the lower energy, the frequency of, you know, all work and no play makes you a dull person and, uh, start dancing in your house. Even if you are vacuuming, dusting, cleaning, whatever you might be doing, right. You're taking care of business, but you're also having fun while you're taking care of business. Um, there are some really good mitigating, um, uh, connections that the moon is making on Saturday. She is trining Uranus. So there's inspiration moving through. There's the possibility of awakening and ahas, surprises, surprise visitors, perhaps. And she is also um, in a uh, sextile with Venus, nice, you know, flow of energy there, conjunct Saturn, briefly, briefly, right, that tends to bring up emotional stuff, make us feel like we're melancholic or not feeling at our best. Um, or not feeling very happy, this too shall pass. Don't get yourself drawn into it. Support yourself. Nurture yourself. You are in control of how you react to all of this stuff. Just because I tell you the moon is going to be conjunct Saturn and that has a tendency to bring our, our happy joy frequency down doesn't mean that you have to succumb to that. You may feel it, notice it, validate it's there, and then go on and do something else that makes you feel good right? It's in your hands. You don't have to succumb to any of this. Just know, though, the theme, if you will, for the weekend is about taking care of business, getting things done, getting ready, getting presents wrapped, perhaps getting presents bought, getting bills paid. Um, maybe there's some goals that you want to set or revision or reimagine now that Mercury is back to direct motion. You can maybe revision some things. And that's a, a very good use of the energy tomorrow. But don't forget the creative expression aspect to all of the weekend. Sunday, Sunday, the moon is in Capricorn. Is it there all day? Yes, I'm afraid it is there all day. Um, 
what can I say, right? Another day of taking care of business. But there's something a little bit different about that day. Sunday, the planet Chiron turns direct. It has been retrograde for about four or five months now. And I want to say since last May. May, yeah. Dang. So it's been retrograde. It has been working on the innards, our inners, our inner fears, our inner wound, our inner child, uh, our inner... Um, the wound, the 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 one place where we've been stuck, it has been moving it through our inner world, maybe calling it to our attention if we weren't aware of where it was. And now with direct motion, it is now our ability to take that next step forward. Remember, Chiron retrograded. It, it moved briefly into Aries, changed the fundamental wound from that of the victim martyr over to the wound of independence versus dependence. And we were dealing with codependence issues and interdependence was a new word we brought into play. And then it turned retrograde, made its way back into <gasps> Pisces, where we were now back to the victim energy and the martyr type of energy, the I'll save the world energy kind of thing. And now with it moving forward, it will be a couple of months yet, but it is our cleaning up that victim energy, finally letting it go. It won't be back there for another 50 years. And now moving us into fully developing self-sufficiency, self-acceptance, self-awareness, independence, but knowing yet when to reach out and get help. And also very much so focusing us on interdependence if you attended the webinar the other night. Now, I could have swore I turned this off. Um, or maybe I turned it on. Yikes. Um, so interdependence is one of the themes that we have coming up for 2019. So here we get the foretaste of that, right? We get to start seeing it as it builds and takes shape. Now, Mercury in retrograde last week, about three or four days ago, was trining Chiron also retrograde, right? So the messages were coming up, right? These messages were being delivered to us, either from delivered up from our subconscious via dreams, via uh, something that someone says to us, maybe a wound that was triggered in some way for us, and then moved on. Well, now Mercury is direct and on Sunday, Chiron is direct and will very shortly after, within an hour or two, come into a trine again <laughs> with Mercury. But now in forward motion, it's what are you going to do about it, right? You've seen the wound. You've seen the fear. You've seen the block. You've seen the limit. What are you going to do? How are you going to deal with it? What are you going to, how are you going to show up in your life now? right? That's all, that's what Chiron is all about. And uh, I, I think for those of you born from about 1969 to 1975-ish, you also have your natal Chiron in Aries. So the coming weeks and months and, you know, even years for you guys puts this under the microscope for you. Where are you holding yourself back? Where are you expecting help from outside of you instead of, you know, being your own best advocate and taking your own steps forward? Um, those are a lot of the things that we are all going to deal with. But for you guys, this is the coming of age. Uh, so if you were born between 69 and 75, these next few years may be a little more difficult for you as you're having to come face to face with the final steps of that wounding process. Now, that doesn't mean things are going to be bad 24-7. I don't mean that at all. But you may very much so see where that wound is playing um, with you. And for the rest of us who have already had our Chiron returns or who have Chiron in a different sign, if you're born in the 80s, uh, 90s, or early 2000s, you have a totally different Chironic wound, then this may just be a process of you all becoming more and more independent, learning the difference between dependence and independence. So that's it. Our weekend is a, kind of a mixed bag, but I don't, I mean, overall, I find it to be a weekend that has lots of potential for creative expression, lots of potential for us to connect with a dream or a vision, taking us somewhere um, moving us into new territory, as it were, maybe not a great time yet to make big decisions because we still have that wonkiness of this Mars Neptune um, connection conjunction. Uh, but we're getting there, right? We're getting there. It's getting clearer. 
and we can see our way forward now, perhaps, where last week was definitely much more foggy. I know that this upcoming week, we're going to have some more clarity available to us. All right, let's see. What's everybody saying it? Maybe I'll make it to La Conner tomorrow for the lighted boat parade. Oh my gosh, is that tomorrow? Um, last weekend was the Cedro Woolley Christmas parade last Saturday. I went to that and froze my butt off out there, but it was fun. Um, Willa says, you don't want me to sing. Sure we do, but just maybe in your own house without anybody else listening to you. Um, <laughs> uh, you said the same thing her coach said. Uh, that's what Michelle is saying. Um, I love it when that happens, right? Because it's validation, validation, validation. And by the way, that's what readings and so forth do for you, right? It validates what you already know to be true for yourself. And we all need that validation. Even though uh, we could say, perhaps, I already did. I drew a card, Debbie. It's right here. <laughs> Hidden. Um, I'm going to share it in a minute. Um, so, you know, that validation, a reading or a card reading or a... Uh, um, having, you know, some sort of, of webinar, whatever should validate for you, the energies that you're experiencing or feeling yourself. And that's what they're for. Uh, Willa's laughing. Debbie says, don't forget a card for Saturday, Sunday, and today. Well, guess what? I have a card, but I drew it for the new moon. So I may have to draw some other cards if we want to take a look at the weekend. So do you want me to reveal? Do you want me to reveal? Um, it's not a very elaborate card, I don't think. Um, but it is interesting. The card I drew for the new moon was unfinished symphony, and it was upside down. So here's what it looks like unfinished symphony. It's kind of a pretty card, right? The world or uh, the blue egg sitting on a piano keyboard. Uh, so unfinished symphony kind of makes us think something yet to, to be done about what we're doing. And in protection mode, so let's see what that says. Um, unfinished symphony, the essential meaning is unfinished business, an incomplete lesson, lack of closure, or the need to make amends. So this is a time to tie up loose ends as you near the completion of a cycle or project and mastery of a lesson or skill. Before you can move forward, it's important that you come to terms with where you are now. Practice radical acceptance. Take inventory so that emotional and psychological closure can occur, and the answers you seek will be found. You can't move forward if you are leaving things unfinished. Reflect on what has passed so that the symphony can finally end on a high note. And the protection message is when unfinished business casts a shadow over your life, it is a reminder that procrastination is a form of self-sabotage. It is not in your best interest to stall. Even stumbling forward is better than holding back. Don't overthink things or let yourself get distracted. Just tie up any loose ends and deliver the results. Don't quit before the finish line. Spirit wants you to win. That's interesting. Coming through the gateway or portal of a new moon, it may be the reason why some of us, uh, me in particular, I'm still sensing that it's that yield sign. There's just not that, that you know, the light's not quite green yet. Um, and maybe it is at the effect of having to tie up some loose ends so that the symphony becomes complete. Um, Rebecca, good morning. I'm also feeling that innovating healing modalities will come through with Chiron entering Aries soon. It's exciting. I think it's really exciting too. Um, I, I, you know, I'm going to have to look at this deeper because it's been a few months since I really looked at Chiron and where it is and how it's going to play out, what it will be affecting. Um, but you know, Aries is a cardinal sign. It's something new. It is a new beginning. Aries being the first sign of the Zodiac, it enters us into a new round of energies. It's youthful, it's exuberant, it's um, exciting, so bold even, adventurous in some ways. So it'll be interesting to see how that takes uh, root in our psyches over the next six or seven years, uh, because that's how long Chiron stays in a sign, about six years. All right. Um, so maybe I should go ahead and draw a card for the weekend. You know, at one point it was kind of funny because like three cards wanted to fall out and I nixed that idea because they were, I don't know, literally I felt like 
my hand didn't want to wrap around the deck this morning like it was stiff maybe from the cold or maybe i'm you know in <laughs> resistance to pulling cards today i don't know maybe there are messages i don't want to hear but anyway good morning Kristen. Kristen is back from her european vacation and we welcome her back and send her more healing energy whatever she needs to get back to health and feeling good so this is going to be a card for the weekend what do we need to know going into the weekend and then i do have some time this morning if people want me to pull them cards personally wow i am not getting a card here i'm not even getting a feeling oh there you are that cracks me up why why what card number is that 31 31 is a four um and i'll tell you why this cracks me up because the planet pluto has it done it yet that's what else we could have talked about today uh pluto has not done it yet but it will very shortly move into the gate 61 and the gate 61 loves this question why and it is one of the questions that isn't any of our business right it's god's business or source business or whatever but it doesn't stop us from asking the question why like two-year-olds right why 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 so let's take a look at what that card means for us for the weekend what card did i say it was 31. uh 31 the question why motives driving intention the power of knowing the why the oracle's message there is great power in understanding your motives right now the oracle asks you to be very clear about why you're asking this question looking for this answer behaving in this way and most important making this choice knowing your why is the key to fulfillment when you are clear about it your intention will then be a magnet for miracles motives define the nature of your experience when you think about something feel it and then act on it this invisible why is the life force energy within the seed which brings it to life and holds the potential for growth uh, for relationship message it says we don't always know why we engage in our relationships in the way we do mostly because our feelings aren't always logical now, are they ever logical? I'm not sure about that one. Now is the time to recognize whether you are being triggered by someone else or if your behavior is motivated by unresolved issues in the past. When you ask yourself, why am I feeling like this? And why did I say that? And spend some time in introspection, the answers may be surprising. Listen to the messages from your intuition, from the knowing deep within you. What does it tell you about yourself and others? In the end, life is all about being loved. Miracles and a deep understanding of your needs and how to get them met are the buried treasures of the why. Uncover them by posing the most powerful question you can ask yourself and your partner today. Why? Prosperity message says, knowing the motives behind your career and creative ventures is the, is the ticket to your greatest success. It's time to ask yourself some probing questions. Are you driven by a desire to serve? Does your prosperity impact the greater good? When you envision your most prosperous life, are you guided by a sense of pure purpose or by a need to make money, acquire things save for the future, or all of these? No motive is bad or good, but having agendas hidden from yourself will lead to disappointment and possibly failure. Be clear about why you want the things you do. If the motives are true, accept them. If they are not, change them so you can step into your extraordinary life. Well, I think that's a great card for the weekend. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So let's see. We have yes, pleases. <laughs> that must be in response to the cards. Okay, so we're going to start with the first yes, please, which was Debbie. Debbie, Debbie. So now I'm going to put these cards back in the deck. No particular order. And... This is for Debbie. So everybody focus your energy on Debbie. And Debbie, what do you need to know? Co-create. Oh, I love this one. I don't think we've ever pulled this card here. So this is for you, Debbie. And it came up, out, up, came out upright. Say that 10 times fast. It has the cheetah and the uh, owl and the egg. 
number 40. So now we're on fours again. Remember the last card was 31 for the weekend. So yours is the next elevation of that, the card 40. And 40 is the essential meaning of creativity, art, inspiration, fruition, manifestation. Love it. You may not consider yourself a creative person, but in fact, you are creating your reality every moment of every day via your thoughts, feelings, beliefs, intentions, and actions. Yet you must consider that you do so in partnership with spirit, consciousness, God, or whatever name you call your higher power. You are a spark of this intelligence that works through you, nudging you with inspired thought and intuitive guidance. You are a paintbrush that co-creates a beautiful, unique expression of your own individuality blended with universal spirit. You are a product of divine inspiration, and now you're aligned with it to co-create miracles, not to co-create, to create miracles. When you view your life as art and know you co-create it, only beauty and grace result. Prepare to be amazed. In the relationship message, Debbie, it says connections of the heart serve to inspire you, opening you up to new ideas you would never have come to on your own. You are looking in a mirror held up by this experience and seeing yourself in an unexpected way. Who is this extraordinary being looking back at you? You are going to be so happy that you kept your heart open. Your love is a unique work of art now, the very embodiment of beauty. The prosperity message, oh gosh, my nose is itching. Flashes of inspiration give rise to great success when you receive this message. You are at your most creative now, and whatever you apply yourself to will lead to the fruition of your dreams. Remember that all your ideas are channeled from a higher source. You create your reality in partnership with spirit. The potential for manifestation is unlimited now. Revel in its vastness. I want that card. Well, in a way, we all got that card, right? Because we're all here together. Um, Debbie, that's excellent. Um, let's see who was next after Debbie. It was Willa. So this is for Willa. And then we will do Rebecca. And then we will do Vanita. And Debbie says she woke up at 444 today. Thank you. Wow, that's interesting, 444. Mostly because yesterday, every magical, mystical, weirdness thing that happened to me happened at 111, 222, 333, or 444. It was weird. And the card for Willa is this one. Oh, this is beautiful. New life. I don't believe we've had this card before either. It is a beautiful fairy waking up from slumber, card number 39, which is also a 12, which is also a 3. So that implies some creative energy too. 39. Hmm. Hmm. Oops. That's... So 39, and it, by the way, it was upright like this. New life. Birth of new ideas, growth, opportunities, a breath of fresh air, life renewing itself. When spring awakens the world, joy and excitement can be felt all around and in your very core. Blossoms burst from the trees overnight. Birds return home and sing their glorious song. And nature is full of promise. Miracles beckon all of us. This is one of those times in your life when new ideas inspire you and new opportunities bring you hope for seeing your dreams come true. All is well in your world and you have the energy you need to feel renewed. Allow your heart to be filled with enthusiasm. Let your light shine for this is a time of good fortune. The relationship message says, new energy enters old relationships and new relationships are bursting with the sweetness and vibrancy only encountered when winter gives way to spring. This is a time to connect with others and share excitement, passion, and hearts full of joy. This card is a very auspicious sign with respect to love and partnerships in all forms. Prosperity message, you have every reason to be optimistic right now as things seem to fall into place magically. New opportunities remind you that abundance is available to you. Delight in the bounty that begins to appear in surprising forms. Stay curious and know that your hopes and dreams are being fulfilled. It's as if new life suddenly infuses your projects, your work, your creative ideas with a kind of electricity that crackles with excitement, potential, exciting potential, excuse me. Fortune is smiling on you. That's very cool. Very cool. Any comments about that one? 
Good morning, Patricia. She says she's putting up um, a link for us to the number 444 meaning from willowsoul.com. And um, amazing, amazing card for you, Willa. Okay, next was uh, Rebecca, I believe. Yes, Rebecca, your turn. So we're going to focus our attention on Rebecca and in pulling a card for her. Gosh, for you guys, the cards are just like popping out. Um, Chop Wood is the card that you got. Number 42, which is a six. Chop Wood. Chop Wood, carry water. Chop Wood, carry water. That's like a Buddhist saying or something. It reminds me of this book I have on my bookshelf that says, after the ecstasy, the laundry kind of reminds us that, you know, even though we are these spiritual beings, we have this very physical work on this very physical planet that we have to work through. So chop wood for you, Rebecca. It says being grounded in everyday experience and humility. So the, and it was right side up, by the way. So it looked like this. Uh, the Oracle's message says there are times when the big dream is meant to lie dormant in your consciousness so that you can pay attention to the simple chores in your life. Consider why pruning a tree is the forerunner of delighting in the beautiful blossoms when it is in full bloom. The mundane act of pulling off dead leaves, watering the soil, and then leaving it to be to let nature take its course is an important step in manifestation. Taking your attention away from your goal brings you into a state of receptivity. This is the deeper purpose for releasing attachment. When you engage in everyday tasks in a meditative, contemplative way, you clear your energy to receive your aha, which brings you ever closer to what you seek. In relationship message, it says nothing is as important right now as just doing what you need to do today, today. Nothing, okay, let me read that again. Nothing is as important right now as just doing what you need to do day to day. There you go. Mm -hmm. Let your heart remember that not everything has to be hard won, passionate, or even obviously meaningful. Relationships and friendships go through lulls when the everyday tasks are at the center of awareness. That is perfect now. Hold hands, wash dishes, make a fire, read a book, share a meal, say nothing, stare into space, pick up socks, tell a dumb joke, and leave space to breathe. The work of your relationship right now is very simple, just to be present. Funny how it takes work to just be. All is well, really. The prosperity message for you says, now is the time to take small steps rather than larger leaps on the journey to creating your most prosperous life. Move your focus off your big dreams and attend to the mundane chores. Focus on the little things that may have piled up while you've been mapping out the greater plan for your life. Um, chop wood, carry water, as the Zen proverb advises, or wash dishes, walk the dog. While you're doing all of that, spirit will have a chance to move mountains and set wondrous miracles in motion for you. Remain humble and aware of the present moment. I love it. That's a great card, too. Uh, let's see here. What else? Vanita says, wow, Willa. Debbie says, thank you, Patty. Will a great card. Colleen, if it's not too late, I will take a card. Sorry, I'm driving at the red light right now. I will do a card for you as well. But there was someone after Rebecca. Rebecca, Rebecca, I think it was Vanita. Yes. So Vanita and then Colleen. And then that should take us just about to the end of the broadcast. I really do love cards. Who knew I was a could be a card reader? <laughs> Maybe next week, instead of cards, we'll do charts. We'll take a look at what's going on next week. Okay, so now we're going to focus on Vanita. And Vanita got Yang. Yang, card number one. Card one. Yang usually means taking action. And everybody's cards are coming up right. I kind of like that, even though I know I've got them all mixed up in there. Card one says... Essential meaning for you, Vanita, is the masculine principle of movement and creative activity, the power to make things happen and taking action. The Oracle's message says, Yang represents the power of action, the energies that propel the world forward and manifesting thought and desire into concrete form. Now is the perfect time to act, for you can easily build momentum and make headway. 
What you want will come to fruition if you proceed confidently. This card signifies new life and is a sure sign that obstacles have been overcome. There is no reason to hesitate. You are the shaper of your destiny now. The relationship message says circumstances are supporting action on your part. It's okay to make the first move. Trust that you will quickly know where you stand. In matters of the heart, there is movement towards your highest good. So go forth with assurance. Passion is in the air. And now is the time to dance to the tune of love. Take the lead. The prosperity message says, Projects, partnerships, and all matters relating to your business are out of the obstacle phase and on to the make it happen phase. Now is the time to stake your claim and get things done. While you can expect to be busier than usual, this card tells you that you have all the energy and vitality you need to accomplish your goals. Abundance is waiting for you to claim it. Oh, awesome card. Rebecca says, thank you. Gosh, this was exactly what I needed to create balance right now. Perfect. I love it when that happens. Angie says, headed to the shower. Have a great day, everyone. You too, Angie. Take care. Crystal, yesterday you briefly spoke about 12 January 2020. It will be my daughter's 10th birthday that day. Can you expand on that day for us, please? Thank you and blessings. I will do that at some point, Crystal. Um, let me just say the reason that day is important is because Saturn and Pluto conjunct that day. They will, throughout much of the end of 2019, be you know coming closer and closer together to that conjunction. And it can be empowering and uh, a little bit daunting. That energy is really about um, taking control in some way, or maybe it's about releasing control in some way. Luckily, you know, your daughter that, you know, she, this will be an empowering time for her would be my guess. But without looking at her whole chart, sweetie, I, I couldn't tell you exactly where that's happening in her life. So I'm going to, take my thank you're welcome Vanita I'm going to take my focus now over to Colleen and pulling a card for Colleen who was sitting at a red light when she typed that message so we know she's not driving and texting <laughs> um okay wow Colleen these need to get really mixed up because nothing seems to be coming out for you yet um up oh, there she goes and the card is soulmates but it was kind of cattywampus. So I think I'm, it was sort of like diagonal. I don't know what that would mean. So we're going to read it both ways. Card number 41. And that is a really cute card, isn't it? Right. Two little lovebirds, but they're penguins. So soulmates. Uh, card 41 is a five. So let's take a look at what that means. How funny. We've had card 39. We've had card 40. And now card 41. That's odd. Okay. 41 says soulmates, harmonious partnerships, love, friendship, companionship, a relationship, fostering personal growth. The Oracle's message says you are meant to evolve and transform with the companionship of others. Certain people enter into your life in order to take you to the next level of healing, consciousness, and authenticity. It is always a reciprocal experience, although the results for each of you will vary. You know these people by the strong pull drawing you toward them, and sometimes by a strong aversion to them initially too. Soulmates can be friends for life or remain in your life for only a short time. No matter what, you will be changed in ways you can't possibly fathom now. Pay attention to these people today. They are your greatest gifts. The relationship message says, consider love in the deepest sense, love so powerful that you will never be the same regardless of how long your relationship lasts. Consider friendships and romantic bonds so compelling that they will overwhelm you with gratitude or break you open so you will finally claim who you were meant to be. Even a companion animal reminds you that it is you who is being rescued and healed. Pay attention for you are in the presence of a soulmate come to guide you home to the real you. The prosperity message for you says strategic alliances are most important right now as you begin to attract the perfect people to support your dreams. This is a journey you will share with others, mentors, business partners, helpers, employees, creative partners, friends, and strangers open doors for you and step through the portal to join you in a harmonic dance 
of collaboration, commitment, and co-creation. This is what you've been waiting for. Now, just because there's an off chance that perhaps it was meant to be in protection, where I'm going to read that one for you, just, just because it's complete then. An important relationship brings you to your knees. This is the kind of soulmate who comes with a powerful gift. Whew. Your patterns and all your old stories that don't serve your well-being enter into this dynamic so you can heal them. This person is called to a sacred task to help you learn, even if it seems uncomfortable, sticky, or even inconceivable. The question is not, why did he or she do this to me? But rather, what is the gift in this? Look into this mirror. You will only be changed for the better. That's a difficult but interesting card, I think. All right. Anybody else needs something here? You guys are all welcome. Um, she's now getting gas, which I don't pump in New Jersey. Isn't that funny? In Oregon, it's the same way. If you try to pump your gas, they tell you, please get back in your car. Uh, 41 can also be four, four, four times one equals four. Woohoo. So we did seem to have a preponderance of four today. That's a, that's interesting because the weekend, we were drawing cards for you really for the weekend and the weekend is with the moon and Capricorn, which to me for is sort of, you know, that work stay within boundaries kind of energy. And that's what Capricorn is, right? So kind of fun. Debbie, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Wow, I just won $40 on a scratch-off ticket. Another four. Oh my goodness, that's a amazing. Validation, validation. So, you know, if we were to look deeper at the number four, which Patricia has given us some links here, so I think, you know, you could probably find the, a deeper meaning behind the number four. When you think of the four, you think of a rectangle or a square, right, where there's this container. And within that container, we have movement, we can move around anywhere, right. And uh, yet, without that container, then you have like this blob and this energy just leaking and dripping out everywhere. So the container is necessary. Even if we chomp away at the, the idea or the feeling of being in that container, when we're there, then we find ourselves in the right place at the right time for the right opportunities. Uh, and with a scratch ticket that wins you 40 bucks. I mean, who can argue that one really, right? So <laughs> thank you all for such a magical morning. Um, <coughs> A magical day. I hope you all have a magical day and a magical weekend. Be creative, dance, play, sing, do whatever it is. Don't make big decisions this weekend. Uh, chop wood, carry water, and then play. Chop wood, carry water, play. Oh my gosh, Jennifer Peachy, good morning to you. She says she woke up at 441 and my phone was at 44%. Wow, there is something moving through this morning about the number four right? Four double fours, four, four ones, four times one being 44. Ay, 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 ay. All right, everybody. Well, let's contemplate fours. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will see you here Monday morning where we'll take a look at the week ahead. Mwah! Until then, I love you all. Take care. See you later. Bye.